Uh, I'd like to begin by thanking the organizers for organizing this and for uh, the opportunity to present this talk. Uh, I'm Shirley and I'm a postdoc at uh, NCBJ Warsaw right now. Um, here's an overview of my talk. Um, I'll begin by giving a very brief overview of uh, how exactly uh, we mean to use old neutron stars as probes for dark matter because this has been discussed by earlier speakers in various aspects. Um, what we, I'll then go on to discuss uh, the main part of the project, which is uh, a study of the goodness of using uh, old neutron stars and their heating as a probe for dark matter um, via an uncertainty analysis that affects these temperatures, and uh, I'll discuss their detectability at the James Webb Space Telescope and summarize. Okay, so uh, doing this very quickly because it has been done very well already. Uh, oh. Okay. Um, sorry, so the PDF format has the images overlaid, um, so I'll go through the points anyway. Oh, okay, so as mentioned, um, neutron stars, any astrophysical object that, can, that sits in a dark matter rich environment uh, can scatter, uh, can collect these uh, dark matter in the ambient environment uh, by scattering of the dark matter particles with constituents of uh, the said object. Um, neutron stars are the most compact astrophysical objects and therefore uh, lead to very efficient capture. Uh, these dark matter can deposit energy into the neutron star uh, via summation over the kinetic energy that is um, deposited in each scattering, and also via annihilation if the annihilation products uh, are also thermalized inside the neutron star. Um, old neutron stars of ages greater than giga years are expected to have surface temperatures of order 100 Kelvin, and kinetic and annihilation heating can bring up these surface temperatures to order 1000 Kelvin. This has been discussed in uh, these works, and most of the authors are in the audience also. Uh, this, uh, uh, order 1000 Kelvin neutron stars uh, with, with black body uh, radiation uh, will correspond to peaks at uh, microns, in microns uh, wavelength. This can lead to detection at infrared telescopes like the recently active James Webb Space Telescope and uh, observation of a cold old neutron star with a, a surface temperature of order 1000 Kelvin can then uh, lead to upper bounds on dark matter interaction with the uh, constituents of the neutron stars. Uh, this gives uh, constraints that are complementary to direct detection constraints because uh, the process being uh, probed is the same as the process in direct detection, which is a dark matter scattering off of a, a standard model particle. Uh, this is complementary because direct detection uh, processes are limited by threshold recoil energy of the detector while kinetic heating is dictated by the chemical potential, et cetera. Also, the dark matter relative velocity with the target are different in the direct detection, which is halo velocity or the 10 to the minus 3C, while in neutron star, these are semi-relativistic velocities. Um, here, I show uh, just a schematic of a neutron of dark matter in falling into a neutron star, where the neutron star itself moves with the velocity V star. Okay, um, the extent of the heating of uh, neutron star from dark matter scattering and annihilation depends on uh, the dark matter model itself of the model of interaction of dark matter with the neutron star's uh, constituents, the equation of the neutron star, which gives its mass, radius, and the uh, uh, escape velocity thereby, and the astrophysics of the ambient dark matter energy density and dispersion velocity, uh, and the velocity of the neutron star itself. Uh, while in the geometric limit, in which uh, the cross-section of scattering is large enough so that all dark matter that is incident upon the neutron star gets captured, this becomes independent of the dark matter model as long as the cross-section is larger than the uh, geometric cross-section. And uh, it depends on now the equation of state of the neutron star, the dark matter uh, ambient distribution, and the neutron star velocity. This is uh, important because uh, these parameters go into the final surface temperature, which is the observed quantity. And uh, the goodness of using this probe uh, of uh, using old neutron star surface temperatures as a probe for dark matter depends on how these astrophysical and your uh, equation of state uncertainties play into uh, the dark matter predictions. 
And we also ask what are the prospects for actually observing said old heated neutron stars. Um, okay, so I'll go through the uncertainties that we account for. The observed quantity is the surface uh, temperature. Uh, this de depends on astrophysical quantities um, where we, okay, so I'll go through this one by one. This is uh, from um, synthesis models for old neutron stars and Milky Way-like galaxies. I show here a probability distribution of a uh, function of old neutron star in a solar circle as a function of the neutron star velocities. These are the normalized PDFs. And we select some representative, uh, representative PDFs from uh, these two papers. Uh, here I give uh, the values that we take for dark matter uh, ambient uh, dispersion velocity and energy density. Uh, we select these from uh, hydrodynamical sim simulations um, that simulate Milky Way-like galaxies uh, and give the uh, dark matter distribution in the solar circle. This is from uh, this Bozognia et al. And uh, this is, uh, on this plot, I show how we uh, account for the equation of state uncertainties. This is a busy plot. So I'll go through this one by one. On the x-axis, the radius of the neutron star, y-axis, the solar mass. Uh, these colored lines correspond to different equations of state that are arrived at by using different physical physics inputs and computational techniques. Uh, the color shaded regions are uh, the parameter spaces that are indicated by uh, different observations. The green uh, region is derived from the uh, neutron star uh, binary merger uh, by being agnostic about the equation of state. Similarly, the red uh, shaded region is from uh, combined analysis of the binary merger and low energy nuclear data. Uh, these colored regions together show the plausible region in the mass radius parameter space uh, where neutron stars can exist and we uh, consider uh, some representative equations of state that span over this plausible mass uh, radius uh, parameter space. Uh, we select uh, equations of state that can uh, uh, support the heaviest observed uh, pulsar, the mass for which are shown by these two dashed lines. Um, I'll skip over this. This is just to show the parametric dependence of the uh, final uh, surface temperature that can be observed and its dependence on these uh, input parameters. Um, okay, uh, and then uh, to ask the question of what can actually be seen by the JWST, we look at the uh, spectral energy distribution. Uh, here uh, on the x-axis, the wavelength y-axis is the SED, and the uh, shaded region shows the band uh, after accounting for all the uncertainties. This is the maximum temperature that we get, uh, 2543 Kelvin, uh, for these uh, uh, mass and radius of neutron star, and this is the minimum temperature we get. Uh, we then uh, select uh, the uh, band in the uh, JWST NIRCAM, uh, FBIN 50W2, which uh, uh, captures the peak of this uh, SED and on and we calculate uh, the signal to noise ratio uh, that can as a function of the exposure time using their publicly available exposure time calculator and the best case scenario is shown here uh, where an SNR of 10 can be uh, obtained with a 24 hour of observation these are the lines correspond to uh, the different temperatures and the other uh, f322 w2 which is another broadband filter in the same um, here we assume that the neutron star sits at 10 parsec. Okay, um, and I'll finish with this plot. Uh, here we put together the, uh, all this information. On the x-axis, the neutron star mass. Uh, Y-axis is the surface temperature as observed on Earth um, by the JWST. Uh, these two lines show the maximum and minimum temperature uh, that would be obtained uh, by accounting for all the uh, previously mentioned uncertainties. Uh, the red Contours show uh, the signal-to-noise ratio that can be obtained. The solid lines show uh, the signal-to-noise ratio after 24.3 hours of data taking. Everything on the right of this solid line uh, will have an SNR of greater than 10, and similarly here. Um, and the takeaway point is that we find that the temperature, uh, the maximum to minimum temperature, that is uncertainty, has a spread of 40%, and uh, the heaviest, densest neutron stars can actually be seen if uh, at 10 parsec uh, with a significant signal to noise ratio at the James Webb Space Telescope. And this is a summary. Uh, I'll stop here. Thanks. Sorry for going over time.
Small right. Small volume. Yes. And what is the uh, expected number and also in terms of keeping, what are the expectations uh, for finding the hidden nutrition in the small volume? Right. So uh, in a 10 parsec uh, radius, one expects um, order 1 to 10 neutron stars from the population synthesis models. Uh, and of course, the flux scales as 1 by d squared. So the farther away you go, it becomes more difficult to see it at the JWST. But uh, in a 50 parsec volume, you can expect order uh, 50 uh, old neutron stars. But the possibility to see this gets more and more weak. And it uh, falls below uh, what the JWST is sensitive to. Thanks for the nice talk. Um, I was wondering if the spectrum of the neutron star is truly thermal or if you have uh, maybe some sort of absorption effects uh, or, I don't know, m magnetic effects from the surface, th things like that. Uh, we've assumed here that the uh, spectrum is actually thermal with the black body spectrum. Uh, for very old neutron stars, 10 like order giga years and older, which is what one would want to look at, uh, the magnetic uh, field is expected to have uh, decayed away. Uh, but here, this is an assumption that the uh, amount of influx of temperature uh, energy is equal to uh, a black body outgoing flux. I don't see any more questions, so let's thank the speaker again.